Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is intermediate hints and tips for setting up your autopilot with the Xbox Series S and X. I'll be talking about things like flight level change, I have that going on here. Setting up a vertical speed for your autopilot to climb to your assigned altitude. And I'll also be talking about things like the heading book, how to change this in flight. This is following on from the basic autopilot I released for the Xbox Series S and X. I'll link that in the top right for you. In the next video, I'll probably be talking about things like uh, the advanced autopilot capabilities and how to set them up. Things like ILS approach and all that type of good stuff. So let's not hesitate. Let's get on with this video. Okay, so for this specific flight, we're going to be taking off from an, an airport called Tonkontin International. Just type in Tonkon in the search bar and it should bring it up. And then just left click on the, or use your gamepad, whichever, and press A. Set as departure and that will set us off on runway 20 in the right direction. Let's go fly. And okay, as you can see there, Tonkontin. Lots of hills, ideal for testing out things like flight level change and vertical speed when climbing. Let's click on ready to fly. And I've got it on scattered clouds preset in the weather. Just going to turn off when I have a preset set, I turn off that bottom wind layer. So we'll do that. First thing we'll talk about is... The vertical speed, how to set that. We can set that up on the ground. I'm going to press my left bumper button and press my gamepad down twice so I get to this bottom left uh, G1000. As you can see here at Tonkontin uh, International, we're above uh, sea level by 3000 feet. So we're 3250 feet above sea level. Whatever altitude we set here has to be higher than that because if you set it to a thousand feet for example your uh, autopilot altitude let's do that let's mouse up over that inner knob on the alt button so to set that that's our autopilot altitude if we press press autopilot here what's going to happen is it's going to dive us we're going to take off it's going to try and get us to a thousand feet above sea level which is below the actual ground, so it will just crash us into the ground, essentially. So have this figure higher than your actual uh, level that you're sat on on the runway, essentially. So I'm going to set this to give us a bit of wriggle room to 7,000. So I'm just mousing up on that inner altitude knob. 7,500. So I go to the outer knob here. And use my mouse wheel to scroll up to 7,500. That's what we want our autopilot to climb to. Obviously, just for those who uh, are very new to Flight Simulator, we've not set autopilot on yet. We've just set an autopilot height. So when we do engage autopilot, it will climb us to that altitude. Now if I take off and press my uh, uh, autopilot, which is Y on your gamepad, on your Xbox Series S and X gamepad by default, if I just clicked on autopilot or clicked on autopilot here, it will try and climb us to that 7,500 feet at a default rate of climb. If you wanted to, for example, set up a vertical speed for it to climb so many feet per minute, you can do that whilst on the ground by pressing the vertical speed button here. So on this panel here, you can see it's the second from the bottom left. Click on that, we can do it on the ground. You'll see a little figure come up here which is zero at the moment. By pressing these two buttons, vertical speed nose up or vertical speed nose down. Let's zoom in to show you that a little bit of a closer 
view of that. So there you go, vertical speed nose up, vertical speed nose down. We can tell the autopilot what uh, vertical speed rate to climb at per minute to get us to that altitude. And we can do this on the ground. So if I say I want the autopilot to climb us at, let's say, 600 feet per minute, which is a safe altitude for where we are. Because if you notice at this airport, which is why I've chosen it, We've got a big hill in front of us. We've got to climb up fairly rapidly to clear that. 600 feet per minute should hopefully, which I've set as you just saw, climb us to that uh, altitude. So when I take off and press my altitude uh, autopilot button, rather, I'll press Y on my gamepad because it does the same thing, it will climb us to that altitude at 600 feet per minute. Might sound a bit complex, but let me show you that in practice. I'm going to press, take off my parking brake, throttle up completely, hold my A button so that it throttles up completely. At this specific airport and runway, you will notice it's quite bumpy. Go and try this. <laughs> it's not the best runway, so you'll have a bumpy ride, which is kind of fun. So I'll get to around 60 to 70 knots. And I shall pull back on my left stick slowly. Use a bit of trim so I can relieve pressure. And I'll press my autopilot. Press Y on my gamepad. The autopilot will climb us to our altitude. We set autopilot altitude at 600 feet per minute. Let me zoom in on this to show you. So it's going to try and get that vertical speed to 600 feet per minute, which it has, and climb us to 7,500 feet. Let's see if that's enough to clear this hill in front of us. Should be. It's looking like it will do. Just to make sure, so if you're flying at this airport, you can try this yourself. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to clear it. That's fine. But just say, for example, that hill was a little bit bigger or you weren't sure. See, we're just about clearing that. Oh, I just judged that just right. It looks like... Ooh. <laughs> There's another big hill in front of us. Say I want to climb a bit higher. Whilst in flight, I can tell the autopilot to climb a little bit higher. By clicking this nose up, vertical speed nose up, I want to climb at 800 feet per minute. Now there's a bit of a caveat with this and you've got to be careful. It's now climbing us at a higher rate of climb. But because the nose of the aircraft has pitched up to climb us at 800 feet per minute, you'll notice our speed, even though we're at full throttle, is starting to decrease. If I increase that a little bit further, 900 feet, you'll notice our speed will increase quite a lot now. If you're not careful, you're going to stall the aircraft. So just be aware of that. As you can see, 900 feet, we could get into a stall position quite quickly doing that. So I'm going to bring that down by using the vertical speed nose down. Let's go down to 700 feet per minute. And that will now climb us at a safer altitude. You can see our vertical speed is now fine. It's actually climbing back up a little bit. Sorry, not our vertical speed. Our actual speed is... Yeah, it's steadying out now, which is nice. And that's a safe speed. And we should clear that little sort of mountain or hill in front of us as well. And by the way, if we climb, let's just bring that assigned altitude back to 6,500 so it gets there a little bit quicker, which should be enough. Once we get to our assigned altitude, we can still use vertical speed to descend or to climb. 
Let's just bring that back to 6,000 uh, assigned altitude. That's what I want my autopilot to climb to. So I'll keep on climbing. You may notice once it gets near to the 6,000, this vertical speed that we just set there may start decreasing because it's reaching our assigned altitude and the autopilot's trying to... There you go, it's disappeared now. And you can see our vertical speed is slowly decreasing. Our autopilot is trying to level us off at 6,000 feet. Lots of lovely wind farms. A lovely area to fly around this, by the way. Again, the Series S graphics come to the forefront here. Absolutely beautiful and impressive. Really good area to fly around. Let's not get too distracted. Back into the cockpit. I now want... Let me just take a look outside again. I want to descend 500 feet. Let me just clear these wind farms before I do that. Okay. Oh, we're just making them as well. <laughs> that was judged. I'm doing this on the fly. Pun intended. Uh... Anyway, I want to climb down now to, let's say, 5,700 feet. Let me just decrease my throttle. I don't want to overspeed, and I'm going to start descending now. I'm going to click on the vertical speed button here again. And I'm going to use nose down to tell it to descend at 200 feet per minute. The autopilot will descend us to 5,700 feet at 200 feet down or descent per minute. Hope that makes sense. But now it's actually doing that, it's following. Once it gets to seven thousand uh, sorry, five thousand seven hundred feet, it will stay there. So even in flight you can alter your assigned altitude, autopilot altitude, press the vertical speed button and you can press either vertical speed down or vertical speed nose up to descend or climb you to your new autopilot altitude. Like I said, it's a bit more intermediate this uh, video, but I hope that makes sense. Play around with it, it's quite easy. And that's how you would use vertical speed or one way in the Cessna 172. Let's go on to our next tip. Okay, so as I've just showed you, vertical speed is one way to get your autopilot to climb to your assigned altitude. Let me just grab my mouse and I'm going to set the autopilot's uh, height again to 7500. So I'm just mousing up on this inner alt wheel to set this to our autopilot assigned altitude of 7500 feet. So 7000 outer knob to go up by increments of 100, 7,500 feet. I'm gonna, now going to show you, and you can set this up on the ground as well, flight level change mode. And what this does, if I click on flight level change on the ground, it'll bring up a little blue figure here. Now, if I use my uh, vertical speed nose up or nose down, let's go nose up, because I want to increase that figure. I'm going to increase that, let's do it first, to a figure of 80. And a couple of things to note here, let's just finish doing that, 80. You can see this blue figure is above our speed ribbon. And what you're telling the autopilot to do now is to take off. When you press your autopilot, it will climb to 7,500 feet at a speed of 80 knots you're telling your autopilot with flight level change mode and you saw I just set that to 80 you're telling your autopilot to maintain 80 knots in the climb so the nose of the aircraft let's get outside and I'll show you this in flight in a minute but the nose of the aircraft will pitch up in this case to maintain that 80 knot rate of climb. So instead of saying I want to climb at 700 feet per minute or 600 feet per minute, you're now telling the autopilot maintain that 80 knots, in, in my case at full throttle, and your rate of climb will be dependent on your pitch 
level on the way the aircraft is pitched to maintain that 80 knot speed it's quite a complex subject to get your head around but let's show you this in practice let's release the parking brake go full throttle again and go for a lovely bumpy takeoff i do like this runway i've got to say probably not the best maintained runway and you can really feel the bumps through your game controller as well it's brilliant so we get to 60 knots or so just over 60 knots maintain that center line there we go I'll pull back gently on my left controller left analog stick pitch up a little bit just so I can relieve pressure and press my Y button. There you go. Now the autopilot's got control. It's climbing us. Let's go down to this bottom left G1000. It's going to try and keep that 80 knot speed at full throttle. Don't forget. And our rate of climb, our vertical speed rather, is dependent on the pitch of the aircraft, on, on the nose of the pitch rather of the way the uh, nose of the aircraft is pitched rather that's a better way of saying it and in our case it's trying to maintain 80 knots which it's doing a good job of doing and as you can see our rate of climb is what is it between six so oh, it's actually around 800 feet per minute so that's a good rate uh, uh, rate of climb so it's a good vertical speed 800 feet per minute and it's keeping us, maintaining us on that 80 knot speed. I hope that makes sense. It's a difficult one to fully explain. But it's going to clear these hills in front of us with no trouble at all. And once again, in flight, if I want to increase that, so I want to uh, say keep us at a speed of. I don't know, 85 knots. You'll notice now that our vertical speed, feet per minute, has decreased because now we're pitching the nose down to maintain 85 knots. The autopilot's maintaining 85 knot speed. So now we've gone down to a rate of 750 feet per minute vertical speed which is still fine and of course in flight I can decrease that to say let's go back to 80 knots because 80 knots is a good uh, speed climb speed and as you can see now our vertical speed is now going back to 800 feet per minute I hope that makes sense quite a difficult one it's a little bit more advanced than basic autopilot but it's my preference way when I'm using an autopilot in flight and I want to climb to an autopilot altitude. I will use flight level change mode and set this to around 80 knots. So the autopilot maintains an 80 knot speed and our vertical speed, our rate of climb here, is dependent on our speed. It's just a much more preferable way to climb I find. And there you go. So now let's go on to our next tip. Okay, so let me show you my last hint and tip in this video. Which is setting your heading bug so you can ask, tell the autopilot to fly to a certain heading while in flight. I'm going to combine some of the things I've already covered. So let's go back to flight level change mode. and oh, Actually, let's set our autopilot altitude first. That's, that's quite important to do. We'll set it to 7000, that's okay. Press on flight level change mode and set a speed of 80 knots to maintain again. Remember, 80 knots in the climb. Let's just click down a bit. Go back up here. One thing I should mention, by default when you load into an airport, an aircraft, your heading book will be in, set on at north, so 360 degrees. Keep that in mind, because when we change it using this heading knob here, I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, by default, it's set at 360 in a northerly direction. 
and we're heading roughly south at the moment just keep that in mind so what we'll do release the parking brake throttle up let's do this quickly go on a bumpy ride again always fun <laughs> really needs uh, to be maintained better this runway needs a facelift really okay let's get to 60 knots just over pull back trim up a little bit just to relieve pressure on my left stick that's fine press the autopilot it will climb us as I showed before at a speed of 80 knots to 7,000 feet now let's go to our heading bug so at the moment like I've mentioned by default it's set on a northerly heading bug say I want to set that to a westerly heading I'm gonna mouse over my and you can do this with the gamepad as well I'm using the mouse for uh, ease I'm gonna mouse down on that heading knob and you can see that blue bug here is moving slowly to the west and our heading uh, readout here is also changing so let's just keep mousing down to get that on our westerly heading roughly it'll be about there to turn to our right 90 degrees now I've got autopilot engaged and I've moved that knob but as you can see the aircraft is not turning to do that you will have to press this heading button so on the left panel of buttons here second from the top press heading select well if you've got a binding set up on your gamepad you can do that as you can see now the autopilot oh let's hope we're not going to crash doing this i should have tested this no we should be fine our autopilot is turning us 90 degrees to a westerly heading as you can see there Let's actually just bring our assigned altitude down on our autopilot to 5,000 feet. Which is a little bit risky in this area. Because I want to show you something. So just say we're set now. We're climbing to 5,000 feet. It's not enough to clear those hills in front of us. Not quite enough. There's a big hill coming up ahead of us there. What's going on there? Let it just finish climbing us. There you go. So it's now leveling us off at 5,000 feet. Say, for example, I don't trust this. I'm going to crash into those hills. Because I've got heading select turned on, like I showed you before, I can alter this heading knob. I'm going to mouse down to turn us to the... Oh, no, mouse up to turn us to the right slightly. Because I don't trust our current heading. It's going to crash us if we're not careful, or crash us into the hills. So I'm going to turn us to the right. There we go. Just mousing up. And our blue bug here on our compass is moving when I do that. And there you go. That's a bit safer. I'm going to increase our altitude slightly there. Again, I'm doing this on the fly. I'll use what I showed you before, vertical speed at the beginning, to climb us at a rate of 200 feet per minute. 300 feet per minute might be better. And that's fine. We should be okay there. But say I want to turn to our left. I want to go through this way now. And I can do this from here. Now, would I mouse up to do this? Uh, no, I'll mouse down. <laughs> so just keep an eye. On where that blue bug is moving when you mouse up or down I'm mousing down to turn us to the left to fly us around this way to fly us through this valley down here and that's how you would use your heading knob once you've clicked on heading select or use your gamepad a binding on your gamepad to do that that's how you would use your heading knob here to tell the autopilot to turn us in flight to a heading that you would like to turn to. 
So there you go, that's my intermediate tips for the Xbox Series S and X with Flight Simulator. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and it's been helpful to you. Subscribe for more, many more Flight Simulator videos on the way. And I'll see you soon.